<laughs> Mr. McCormack. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. That's all right. It's been a bit of a. Come on through. Hey, focus it there. How's your chest? It's still, I've still got a bit of a cough, but it's better than it was. Because your chest actually is clear. Oh, is it? That's good. In May, when I saw you, you actually were seven weeks of hoarseness. Yeah. a bit longer now. Yeah, it's mainly on nights it goes hoarse. I just put that down to being tired. Tiredness doesn't cause hoarseness. No. Are you hoarse as much as you used to be, or has it improved? Uh, it's about the same, to be fair. It's about the same. Yeah. You had an injury not long ago, I yeah. could see. Uh, well, it was, um, I got assaulted, or I got scratched by um, an unpleasant patient at work. Was the skin broken? Yeah. Mr McCormick is a paramedic, and while he was working, he sustained um, an injury where the skin was broken due to his interaction with a patient. Now, unfortunately, when skin is broken, the main concern is whether a blood-borne virus, such as HIV, hepatitis, syphilis, has been contracted. Was there a HIV and everything else tested? Uh, they sent me for bloods, so I had them at the QA, and I got some injections out of tetanus, and... Hep B booster, I think. Was that less than three months ago or more than three months ago? That was uh, 6th of April it happened. It is very rare to get bloodborne viruses contracted by, for example, needle stick injuries or by broken skin, but it still has to be taken seriously and there are specific protocols in place both in hospitals and GP practices to manage that. Because originally I just wiped it with a, a clean owl wipe and I was like, it's fine. We will need you to repeat your blood test, yeah. especially the HIV one, if you had broken skin. Yeah. It's not unusual for HIV to sometimes do this as well, the throat thing. Hello, love, you all right? Can I come and give you a hug? I just I haven't seen you for ages. Come here. Oh. Oh, it's look, I mean, you're all right. Oh, right, there we go. Oh, it's lovely to see it's you. It's nice to see you. I ain't seen you for a long time. Mr. Addicott, please. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, Dr. Harry. Hello. How are you? Well, struggling. <laughs> struggling? Struggling. Okay, let's have a chat about it. OK. I've got um, an, a student with me. Is that OK if they sit in? That's all right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thanks. Right. I'll take my jacket off. Get the breath back. The heart condition, actually. Leaky valve, that's one of the things. But um, this new drug mm. is causing a real problem, resulting in me going about every hour to spend the penny. My stools were becoming very really soft. I started getting pain in the joint here. Yep. And I was having difficulty walking, in fact. Yep. Now, I don't know if you want to um, examine me. The point is, of course, up around here, around the genitals, um, it's getting massive. I know three people who've had new heart valves. The oldest was 83. He's like a new man now. Mm. I appreciate that surgeons are probably reluctant to mm. try it on... A 92-year-old or 93-year-old. Yeah. You know, you've got to speak to your heart doctor about the possibility of an operation, you know, if that's what it comes to. Just bearing in mind the risk of such a big operation on somebody like yourself, you know, and having an anaesthetic, it might be more risky than the benefit of having yeah. a replacement yeah. valve. Anyway, would you like to have a look? Yes, let's have a look at you over here. OK, so take your trousers down. Yes. Leave your underwear on. Do you need a hand? Yes. If you can lift my legs up. Yep. Oh, boy. Oh. OK, Georgia, do you want to come through? And just have a feel of his legs. Just gently have a press down and sort of with your fingertip. Okay. A, lot hot, a, lot, a lot more than that. You're barely touching it. <laughs> Get a dent in there. Can you see the dents that you're making? Yeah. Because it's full of fluid, you're pushing the fluid away and then it's just refilling. So when you have swelling of the legs, it's called oedema. Most people get fluid up to here, 
So Mr. Adicott's got fluid all the way up here, even into his lower tummy. That's how much fluid retention he's got because the heart's not working very well. So your legs are really tight here. Yeah. The skin is really tight. So if you get dressed yes. and we'll have a listen to your chest, okay? Yes. All right, brilliant. Oh, thank you. No problem. Um, no, all this started back in January, actually, when I had severe diarrhea. And that was actually as a result of a sudden allergy to porridge oats. And when I stopped that, uh, when I was called in Solly Old Hospital for five days, uh, I didn't have any diarrhoea. They discovered uh, I got this uh, high heart rate. So uh, the consultant there put me on the beta blockets and it's all developed from there, hasn't it, Doctor? Yeah, since then, yeah. yeah. So what we'll do today is we'll, we'll, we will prescribe you the 40 milligrams yes. of furosemide. Yep. You got the option of doubling up the dose if you can cope with the 40 milligrams. Yes. When you're at home, you must elevate your legs, use a footstool. All right, let's hope that this medication does the trick because we need to get that fluid off you somehow. Yeah. Won't be any good to take it halfway through the day. The idea is that if you take it um, in the morning, and if you are going to do lots of weeing, you get all the weeing out of the way, so you've got the rest of your day to get on with stuff. Oh, that's, that's the point. Right, well, yeah. thank you very much. You're all right, thank you. Thanks for coming again. You're learning a lot from this doctor. He's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Here's all the best. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. such a nice guy. But yeah. I've got lots of time for him. There's not many 92 year olds like him. Yeah. Can I have a look down your throat? Yeah. Any recurrent fevers, any problems swallowing? No. Feeling of tiredness? Yeah, but that's just because of the shifts, I think. That's just the energies. <laughs> yeah, well, I like nights. I don't like days, so I tend to do nights. Really? Yeah. I can see the girls more on nights, don't I? Because I can take them to school and pick them up and... How old are your girls? The youngest is... How old are you? Five. Five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just checking. They are. Mm. Do you smoke at all? Mm. The big R for me. Um... Okay. How yeah, long have you smoked for? Um, I was about 20, so about 12, 13. Before you were born? Yeah. I have got down and I do want to stop. We can't. I did buy a vapor, didn't I? We have a stop smoking clinic. And I know it doesn't help when you've got a stressful job like yours. We all have different ways of coping. I kind of point, alluded to this the last time we spoke. Having a hoarse voice for more than three weeks usually gets us a bit, hmm. And you've got a smoking history. And we've got all the other risk factors, which I won't go into depth with as you've got a little one sitting next to you. I would consider an urgent referral to ENT. We need to know what's going on here. And even with my little tool, all I can see is that yeah, just, so just basic stuff. I think we need to look a bit further down about why are you hoarse. So if I send a two week wait referral, if you don't hear from them in two weeks, you must let me know. When you go there, there'll be a big clinic and the clinic might have the words cancer on it. That's not because I'm thinking that's what it is. It's one of those things I have to rule out. What was concerning was Mr McCormack had a hoarseness for more than three weeks. Now, adding that to the fact that he also had an injury not long ago that may have subjected him to things like HRV, and then adding another factor that he does smoke that increases the risk of a cancer or more sinister illness. So, therefore, he was referred to what we call a cancer pathway to be investigated in less than two weeks. Are you bored now? I missed you some toys, didn't I? Come on. Oh, toys. What are you getting? Too much. She gets far too much, don't you? Oh, she actually agrees with you. <laughs> I'll give in too easy. Ready? Right here. Any issues, cool. let me know. Bro, thank you. No problem. Bye.